Well, can I open up the first football topic of tonight, Peps? Yeah, go for it, buddy. Because there's a couple of things that are just have revolved off this. Is having your own ground an unfair advantage in today's performance AFL levels? We look at uh, Geelong have their own ground. Melbourne exclusively train now basically on the G. Is this becoming is this becoming a sticking point now for those teams who don't get to have their own home ground advantage anymore? Uh no. Okay. No. I don't think it does because everybody's got their sort of home ground advantage. So you've got your home ground advantage, haven't you? Adelaide Oval, yep. Okay. The Perth teams have their home ground. Well, well, well yes, they do. Optus. Do they train they're, on Optus? No, no one trains on Optus. Oh, no, they train, train at their own facility. You train at your own facility. Train at facility. No one trains on the MCG at all. So the difference between probably – I think the only two teams that have an advantage, actually there's three. And two of them are uh, advantages because of ground. So Sydney and Geelong because of the dimensions of the ground, whether it's thin, whether it's shorter, they're the two teams that had the advantage. The only other one I'd say that has a semi-advantage would be Gold Coast because when the humidity and the heat gets up there, they are used to it. Obviously the southern teams aren't. So that's the only difference I would say when it comes to, to that sort of thing. You've got to win. It doesn't matter. You've got to win finals at the MCG. You've got to win finals at the big stadiums. So, yeah, you might have nine games or 11 of your home games at your home ground, but you still have to travel. Yeah. Because we always talk about, we always talk about the affirmation of, you know, the affirmation and all that sort of thing. If you go to Geelong, I know you've been there quite a few times. You have about a hundred to two hundred of your away team supporters, and yep. the rest is Geelong. Yep, it is a deafening roar. Yep, i I think that means something, and I think that I think that it's a shame that that grounds such as Optus Oval, like you've said, or whatever it's called now, the Carlton one, that that has capacity easily for forty plus. Yep, well, I don't see why why clubs aren't pushing harder for their own home ground advantages like Geelong? Well, the the financials behind it. Where where are you going to build these grounds? So that's the thing. Like, it I know we had them, but we can't. But, well, you can't. Because Windy Hill, it's a small ground anyway. You wouldn't be able to do it. Glen Ferry Oval, you couldn't do it. North Melbourne, you couldn't do it. Uh, Western Oval, you couldn't do it because they've all got these facilities there. Mm. Uh, Fitzroy doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Princess Park Icon is probably the only one that you might be able to get. But once again, the blue oh, are on fire at the moment. Yeah. You know, yep. So I think the days of, of suburban football is gone. Uh, a couple of things, though, lots of things are coming up uh, here. Buzz reckons that the the um, the home ground is definitely an advantage at Cadillac Park. Yes. The thing that they said though on the the the, the coverage was that. At Cadinia Park, because it's 40,000 now, they're allocating more tickets to um, Melbourne-based supporters coming up. So it's not just you're not going to struggle for your ticket. You, you're going to get more. I think that they have to. Um, you might be able to get five of the thirty, five of the 40,000 these days. Like that, that, At least you're getting something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the exact number is. Really good number here by Rambo. The Bombers have two grounds of the same dimensions as the G and Marvel. So depending on where they're playing – they will set up their training either on the MCG size ground or the the Marvel size ground, which there's is nothing like your own. Like nothing, there's nothing like the deck of the G or nothing like the deck of Marvel yep. Stadium. But this is also, I also want to tie this into the Brisbane Gabba developments over the mm. last week that sort of come out. So we've known that they need an upgrade to the facilities. They've been asking the Queensland government now for quite some time to upgrade the facilities. This Sunday, yesterday, I think it came out that they're probably more open to building a brand new ground for football for Brisbane Lions. Dropping instead of instead of doing the two point two billion dollar upgrade, dropping three point five billion dollar yep. new stadium. Yep. I think that's um I think that's a huge win. I said it's a huge win. So they're not going to upgrade the Gabba, but they're going to get their, a different place to play football. Is that what they're saying? 
pretty much the same as the situation that um, Footy Park yep. and Adelaide Oval was in. So Footy Park was going to cost too much to upgrade. They had a facility there they can invest into, and that's what they've done. Okay. But where's the Brisbane one going to be? That's a great question. I don't know that yet. Well, at least the Adelaide Oval was already there. It was a great place for footy. They just upgraded the stands, etc. So at least they could do it. The problem is they don't have a transitional oval to play at whilst those stadiums. So they played at Footy Park until Adelaide Oval was ready. Then they removed it. They don't have that in Brisbane. They've got Brisbane. What, are they going to play up at Gold Coast? I'm and the other thing is, are they going to do this by halves? You saw what's happened over in Perth when they went from the Wacko and Subiaco over to Optus Stadium. Gorgeous facility. Are Brisbane going to do the old poor man pays twice and just upgrade it? I, I don't know. I just, it's something I don't know. that big, I don't think you need to. I think you need, just need to knock the whole joint down and start again. So knock Gabba down completely, lose a resource, and rebuild. Yep, rebuild the place. And where, where would you play for that five to six year, ten year interim? Well, there's two ways that they could do it. There's either knock the whole place down and maybe they have to play at Gold Coast or somewhere else. I'm mm-hmm. just throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. The other option is what they do with the MCG. So if you remember when they built the Southern Stand, when they built the uh, alterations for the Commonwealth Games, yep. they knocked half the stands down, left the other ones going, and then they'll still only be able to get maybe 20,000 in there and they work their way around. I think that's the only way that they can do it if they still want them to play in Brisbane. Oh, just like, I suppose, just like Cadenia Park, just the same thing. Yeah, exactly the same thing. I think that's the only way that they can do it. If they want to play in Brisbane, just knock down half of it because you, you hear the, the the stories over the years, what those facilities were like. They were putrid, and they still are, even with those minimal upgrades that they have. So you can upgrade it, but you still got the foundations of that mm, in there. You're better off just getting a clean state. And you know what it's like, J-Dog. You know, to, to, if you want to put an extension on a house, sometimes it's better to knock the house down and build what you actually want than trying to retrofit something onto uh, something that exists. It actually can be quite harder to do. Keep a 20% margin in your, in your, in your, in your kitty for yeah. renovations. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. But I just think that that's a better way to do it as well too. Uh, I think that's what. Yeah, I, that's, like, but but if you want to talk about advantages, here's another one. Rambo says it perfectly. The only two teams that get the advantage of a home ground in the gather round are the Adelaide ones. So this is well, why I said during well, gather round. Why isn't the showdown played during the gather round? Because it would burn down. Out of, no, it'd be the best. I, I agree. I do not like. To see showdowns played in preseason, knock arounds, and sh- stuff like that. I'll not swear. Yeah, that's right. But imagine that was the Saturday night game. Because no one would come. Showdown. Really, I don't think. It'd be just in Adelaide and, and Adelaide Crows, so Port and Crows thing, where it's all about being more about getting a Collingwood or a Hawthorne or a Melbourne playing on a Saturday night. Yeah, but, I, but the flip side to the way I look at it, J Dog, is that. You're getting the Adelaide teams are getting a free hit because everybody has to go over there. Yeah, it's too, too, too. There's too, they're both too big of supporters over there being in their home state that they'll just take up the whole ground and not anyone will ever go to the football on Saturday. That's fine by me. I don't mind that. I just think that the, the gather round should be something that, that people play. Uh, tell you what, this whole thing about home ground advantages, uh, the Pies, because they play X amount of games there. Remember, Richmond played their last eight in a row at the MCG. So they're the teams that I think get the, the advantage of playing in front of big crowds at the G on a regular basis because teams want to play Richmond, Carlton, Collingwood. I'd even go still far as saying Essendon because they are the big drawing clubs, Hawthorne as well. You want to play those clubs at the G as a home game for you because it maximizes the revenue coming through. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just on a, on a, on a note. There's no advantage. From a game perspective, like Cadinia Park, SCG, Metricon Stadium. And I think that's that, that's sort of the angle I was looking at it going, well, I watched the Melbourne game and I, and I saw the crowds there and I was like, you know, when, you, when you, we have the grounds in, in, in soccer, like Old Trafford and people like that, like they are like institutions. If you can get into one of those and spend the huge amount of money on the tickets to go to those, that's a real thing. And I thought, how good would it be to see Carlton return to Optus and then to go and sit in a Carlton game or, or something like that. I don't know. Just 
it's a shame that we've lost that in favour of these huge conglomerate grounds where they have 90,000, but only on a weekend you'd have 50 to 40,000 there. I don't yeah. know. It's just, yeah. And I'll throw this one out to the viewers. Do you know the one thing I did like during the preseason when they played the like the actual preseason games? Was that all the you know a good portion of the games were at Icon Park? I I thought that that was pretty cool because it's pretty central to get there. It's just to you know go down to Ding Ding Tram uh, Sydney Road where it is. I don't know if it's for the station. Go down to um, Melbourne Central, take the tram straight down. There's probably other stations a lot close to that. Zoo, go down the zoo, the, the zoo, zoo tram. And bang, straight you're straight there. It's easy to get to. It's easy to get home from. Uh, it's big enough for preseason games. And you know, that is one ground that is big enough can go tomorrow. Like it could start tomorrow. I reckon you could, but once again, that they've done so much work getting the that centre built. You couldn't knock it down. I, I think that's the thing. Is is like you got you know a half a third of the ground is made up of all these facilities. Unless you're going to try and squeeze twenty thousand and. You know, it looks great on one side, but if you go have a look at the the stands and the, the toilet facilities and the food facilities, like that's where you're going to have to spend your money for the upgrades, and it's just not viable. 